Since I started building my 10 channel amplifier, I had a couple of people ask me how I um, learned how to do all this, how I got into electronics. And um, the truth of the matter is, as far as learning electronics go, I never really did. And uh, I should probably explain that. Okay, we have to go way back to when I was a kid. Every toy that I got, especially the electronics, you know, the ones that had anything electrical or electronic inside, I took those apart. The C, it wasn't to see how they worked or to learn from it or even to repair them if they stopped working. It was the rather absurd notion that I could maybe improve them, make them work better. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wound up taking all my toys apart and never did quite get most of them back together. And what I learned from that was that, you know, this stuff is more complicated than it looks on the surface. That's the, the big lesson right there. Nothing is as simple as it seems. So fast forward to when I'm a teenager and, you know, going to Radio Shack every once in a while, buying electronics books. Um, mainly what I would do is I would buy some parts at electronic at, uh, at Radio Shack and I would try to build something and it wouldn't work. Almost never did it work, in fact. So that was kind of a learning experience there too, that nothing is as easy <laughs> as it seems. So now I had the electronics books but I tended not to spend time reading them. And that was a big downfall. And this is something I, if I had my time back, I would have done more of when I was younger. And that way I would have a better understanding of the theory behind all this. And uh, probably be at the point now, like a lot of people that have a lot of theory, they wouldn't even bother to try to do any of this. You know, the more you know, the less you're likely to do type deal. So anyway, fast forward again to my uh, mid to late 30s and I'm, I'm deep into speaker building and, and then I turned my attention to uh, designing and building amplifiers and I was doing that for quite a while. And uh, the big benefit of uh, the time, that time, was that there was internet and there was all these resources that you could draw upon. There were ready-made circuits that you could play with. And best of all, there were simulators that you could use that would simulate a circuit and show you if it would work or not. And then you could, you know, take that and build it in the real world and have it work. And that was awesome. That's what I needed. Right? That's exactly what I needed. I needed the resources where I could find the ready-made or ready-designed circuits, and then I could adapt them to whatever I needed. And if I needed to change something, that would push me into learning how it worked a bit better. But then I never did, and still to this day, have a very solid grounding in the theory. Okay? I can tell you basically how something works, but I can't get into the details on it because I simply don't know it. And that brings us up to where I am now. And I'm building this. And um, before this, I built two other amplifiers. One I didn't document yet. And that's the amplifier I built for the uh, side speakers I made. And I posted those videos on this channel. But the amplifier itself, I, I have the footage for it. I haven't edited that video yet. And then the one before that is the four channel subwoofer amplifier that I built and that's being used in my basement, still not finished. <laughs> what I have to do with that is, is design and make a front panel and a couple of other things on the inside to finish that up. And I'll get to that after I finish building this one. And I'm going to finish building this one. This is the biggest one yet, the most complicated one that I've ever taken on. And the way it is for me, I, like I said, I'm good at building stuff. So 
I can learn how to do something, do it, and if it doesn't work, then I'm kind of like a bulldog in, in that I'll, I'll, I'll like dedicate my, my existence to figuring out why it's not working and then make it work. So you do something and it works and you feel really good and you do something else and for some reason it doesn't work and then you're, you're spending hours, maybe days, maybe even a week or more figuring out why it's not working and then when you do get it working, you're feeling good again and then you build something else and it's working and you're feeling good. So it's like that. It's kind of a roller coaster, a stop and start type thing. But this for me, for the, for me, this is a, like a passion project. This is what I really like doing right now. I get into, you know, um, I don't know if I can call it states where I'm really interested in something and it kind of obsesses me because right now I've got this going on and I've also been building the new island for my kitchen. And that project is, is kind of going along at a snail's pace because I've been putting so much time and effort into this because this is what I really want to do right now. And so I kind of got to wrench myself away from this and put time into the island. And that's almost done. And this is... I could say that this is probably 75, 80% done. Um, the biggest part of it, well, one of the bigger parts of it was the case that I started building 15 years ago. And the only thing I had to really do with that was build a new back panel, also make dividers. And all, you saw that in the two build detail videos, if you watch those. I'm at the point right now where the power supplies for the amplifiers and the crossovers are done and installed in the case. And what I'm working on now are the individual amplifiers that mount on the heat sink. I've already got one. Um, this is not the prototype. I did a prototype earlier uh, just to test. This is the, the proper one here put on here to test and measure again, even though the prototype worked, you know, Still want to test and measure the actual one. And here it is, fully fitted out with all the proper components in that. And I've got nine more of those to uh, put together. And um, I started doing that yesterday, assembling though. I forgot how tedious it is assembling those boards. Like one or two is fun. Three or four is, you know, kind of fun, tolerable anyway. 10 <laughs> is kind of a, a slog, okay? Putting 10 of those together. So yeah, I'm about halfway through the assembly of the rest of the boards. After that, then I'll, I have to get these heat sinks cleaned up and painted on the outside. I came up with a design for the amplifier that I'm happy with and it involves painting I don't have to watch, I'm snagging these wires. Uh, it involves painting these heat sinks on the outside. I'm going to leave them um, regular on the inside, though. Just make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'll get everything mounted, and I'll put it all together finally. And then, oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot the eight crossovers that I need to make. I've got the boards already. I ordered those. And... That's another going to be another tedious job, except each one of those is kind of different while well, they're paired. So you got two that are the same, two that are the same, two that are the same, and two that are the same. And then the final two amplifiers on the board, this one included, won't have a crossover. This one or the other one like this on the other side will be used for my um, bass shaker that's underneath uh, my, my seat, my listening room. And then I'll have the other one to do something else with, possibly a center channel speaker, just because I like building speakers too. So <laughs> I may build another speaker. Uh, or I could use it to power the Hafler circuit speaker that sits directly behind my seat. But I'd need to run a wire to get it to that uh, location. But then that wouldn't be that big of a deal. So yeah, that's basically it, how I 
didn't learn electronics but can get through it because of all the knowledge, the accumulated knowledge in human history is at your fingertips on the internet, right? And the tools that you know, 20 years ago nobody would even dream about, well, they could dream about them, probably some existed, you can get them for free now, you know, to use. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful time to be alive in that regard, that's for sure, where you can know basically very little <laughs> and build something this complex competently. Before I go, I'm going to show you a short segment that I recorded starting up this amplifier. And uh, the idea is to show, first of all, um, whether it has any turn on thump, because that's a big problem with homemade amplifiers. They, you know, you start them up for the first time and they, they throw the cone out and there's a big thump that doesn't sound very professional. And this one, as it turns out, doesn't have much of a thump, although the cone does move slightly. Uh, the other thing is, and you'll see this at the first uh, part of the presentation, is how much hiss and hum comes from the speaker uh, after it's turned on. Now, like I say, the first part of this is me turning it on. There's the silence before, after I jostle the mic, that is. And I've got the lavalier mic that I use right here positioned about six inches away from the speaker, uh, just on the end of a stick, and is picking up whatever ambient noise that's in my shop. Now, I recorded that late in the evening, so there wasn't much traffic or anything like that, and I'm not really on that busy of a street, but you can see that there is some ambient sound. And then you, there's going to be a couple of clicks, and those are the relays on these boards here for the power supply. I've got two for the um, main switch, and then they turn on these power supplies, and the power supplies have two relays as well, which bypass the soft start. So you're going to hear those, those are those clicks, and then immediately after that, you're going to hear what's coming out of the speaker as far as hum and hiss go. And remember, it's this microphone positioned six inches away from it. And not only that, I boosted this, the volume of this recording up by 30 decibels. So that's the reason why the ambient noise <laughs> sounds so bad. And then after that, I'm going to play some music um, from this speaker. And this is the speaker that I'll be using. This is the one that I made to test, you know, deep versus uh, shallow box. This is a, uh, six inch coax C's uh, coax speaker. There's a crossover in here already, one that I made specifically for this speaker, designed and made for this speaker. So it's ready for action. And you'll get an idea of, well, you'll get an idea what the speaker sounds like mostly, but you'll also hear what the amplifier sounds like.